Hi, my name is Mark Gorman. I want to talk to you about how to hear the voice of God. This is the first of the video teachings that I'm doing on this topic. We're definitely not going to cover the entire subject in one session, but we're going to get started in this session talking about how to hear God's voice. And before we do, let me just mention to you that if you would like to get a free audio teaching that I did on the life of Josiah. It's titled, You Have a Destiny. You can get it right now by going to our website, which is markgorman.com. And right there on the first page, you'll see a link that says free audio, and you can download that message. You have a destiny. You can download it on MP3 or you can order an audio CD to have shipped to you. So just go to markgorman.com and click on the link to get the free audio, MP3, or CD. Now, let's get into our teaching. I want to start by looking at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. As we look at that passage, it says to us, you have need of endurance, that after you have done the will of God, you will receive the promise. After you've done the will of God, you will receive the promise. You see, God speaks to us in two different ways. I call it two different channels or two different frequencies. It helps us to put it in a modern vernacular that we can understand it better. A lot of people don't understand this, and because of that, they think that when God speaks to them, that it is always something he wants them to do. But understand this. Look at that verse again. It says, when you have done the will of God, you will receive the promise. You see, the purpose of the promise is to give us inspiration and encouragement the purpose of the will is to give us direction. So if you want direction, don't look at the promise. And if you want inspiration and encouragement, don't look at his will. The promise is to inspire you and encourage you. The will is to give you direction. All through the Bible, we see where people made the mistake of trying to do the promise. You see, the reason God gives us the promise is to keep us motivated while we're doing his will. Because sometimes doing his will can be a real test of our faith. And that's why we can look back to that promise he gave us. You remember when God gave Joseph that dream? God gave Joseph the dream so he'd have something to hang on to while he was going through the whole education process that it was going to take to make a leader out of him, because he wasn't a leader when he got the dream, but he became a leader as he went through all that process, you see. But what did Joseph do? He tried to make the promise happen. He immediately goes to his parents, went to his brothers, telling all of them about the dream, about the promise, and what happened? His brothers turned on him. They threw him in the pit. They sold him as a slave. They took his clothes. They put blood on him, told his parents that he'd been killed by a wild animal. All these things happened to him because he tried to do the promise instead of using the promise for encouragement while he's doing God's will. I mean, look at Abraham and Sarah. When God first promised them a son, they got all excited. But then when it didn't happen as quickly as they thought it should, what did they do? Sarah went to him. She said, why don't you try to conceive a child with Hagar, my maid? And they did. And as a result, what did they get? Ishmael. What was Ishmael? Trouble. Because when they eventually did receive the promise, which was Isaac, what did Ishmael do? He mocked Isaac. You see, your mistake will eventually mock your miracle. Your mistake will mock your miracle. And that's when Sarah turned to Abraham. She said, look, the child and his mother, Hagar, they're both out of here. I want you to get rid of them because he's mocking our promise, our miracle. 
See, they eventually learn to do the will of God after they messed up by trying to do the promise. And we see it over and over throughout the Bible. But you see, when God gives you that promise, it's to encourage you because he knows that when he tells you his will, it's going to test your faith. See, when God first told Abraham he was going to give him a child, Abraham got all excited and then God said, by the way, you might want to pack, you're going to be moving. See, God knew that if he would have told him that he needed to move first, he wouldn't have gone through with it. But when God gives you the promise first, then when he tells you his will, it's easier to do his will when you can hold on to the promise. And there are people who are listening to me right now that God has given you a promise. And unfortunately, you've been trying to make the promise happen. Stop. You're going to end up with an Ishmael in your life. Instead, use the promise for inspiration and encouragement, but do his will. Learn the difference between God's promise and his will. In future teachings, I'm going to talk to you more about how to recognize God's voice, how to know God's voice. But all I'll tell you right now is, do you remember when you first accepted Christ as your Savior? You remember that deep, deep peace that you felt in your spirit? That was because you were in God's will. Now, every time you're in his will, you'll feel that peace again. There may be turmoil all around you, but deep down inside, you'll have that peace of knowing I'm in his will. That's why the Bible says, let the peace of God reign in your hearts. It's because God wants that peace to direct us and let us know when we're in his will. But don't confuse the promise for his will. The promise is to inspire you and encourage you. His will is for direction. God, I pray that you'll help each person who's listening to this teaching to recognize the difference between your promise and your will and that they will understand the purpose of each, that we hold on to the promise so we can keep doing your will. The promise is to give us that hope so we can be faithful in doing your will. Help us to do that, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. I'm looking forward to future teachings, future times with you as we teach more on this and other topics. Remember, if you'd like to get the free audio of You Have a Destiny, a message I preached on the life of Josiah, the youngest king Israel ever had. You can get it by just going to our website, markgorman.com. Click on the link for the free audio. You can either get the MP3 or the audio CD that you can have shipped to you. God bless you. I hope this has been a blessing to you. And please watch for future teachings.